This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. We've got some week one overreactions, or are they just reactions? Next, on this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. But there's going to be one team that's going to play solely as a team. No man is more important than the team. No coach is more important than the team. The team, the team, the team. Looks deep for Anthony Clark. Waits for it. Yes, Clark. Hey, they said you can't be a hard guy. Now what? Brady gets to Rufik. Just before Brazil got him, and a leaping interception by Woodson. Harbaugh back to throw over the middle, caught by Collins at the five on his feet, touchdown Michigan! On his way. It's good! He's 5'7", 179 pounds, a junior at Michigan, but Jamie Morris packs a wallop, and he delivers for Bo Schindler. And here's your first play. Pressure coming, second. It is Glenn Steele, number 81, who fought his way through the traffic. Option. And Robinson calls his own number, and he's going to score. Oh, an easy touchdown for Robinson and Michigan. We're going we're gonna to win the championship again because we're going to play as a team. And when we play as a team, and the old season is over, you and I know it's going to be Michigan again. Michigan. Blue, welcome to this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. I'm Steve Dace, and yes, we'll have plenty to say about Michigan's 51 to 7 slobber knocking of the Colorado State Rams here. We'll get into that and what are the reactions or overreactions in just a minute. But first, a reminder about our friends over at Prize Picks. We have done two player picks with Prize Picks in our last two episodes, and of course, I'm exactly two and two thus far. This week, I know I've got a guaranteed win because one of my picks with prize picks is their promotion. Tom Brady just has to throw for basically nothing. What is it, like more than one yard? If he throws for at least one yard, that's a W. That's part of their opening week in the NFL promotion at prize picks. So I'm in. I'll take the easy W. Tom Brady over one yard passing. I also like Jameis Winston. Over 225 yards passing against the Atlanta Falcons. I'm going to go with that one as well as my second pick this week with prize picks. Prize picks is the easy way to play daily fantasy. Just pick two to five players and an over under on their projections and you can win up to 10 times your bet on any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. Prize Picks has a ton of stats to choose from, uh, including with football, touchdowns, yards, catches, and more. Prize Picks, an award winning, easy to use mobile app, both available on the Apple Store and the Google Play Store today. All right. Download the Prize Picks app today at the App Store or Google Play. Use the promo code Michigan. Promo code Michigan for an instant deposit match of up to 100 bucks. Again, get the Prize Picks app at the Apple App Store or Google Play for your Android. Use the promo code Michigan for an instant deposit match of up to $100. And now, Are these overreactions or are they just reactions? We've got five hot takes because that's what we do in week one. We get no preseason. We wait nine months for games. And so it's impossible to not just completely overreact to everything you see in week one. But let's see if we are completely overreacting or if we are just reacting with number one. J.J. McCarthy should be the starting quarterback. Now, it is clearly trending that way. In fact, I, I think it is more likely than not. That barring an injury to J.J. McCarthy, you may have seen Cade McNamara's last start as the Michigan quarterback. But for now, I'm still going to say it's an overreaction. Why? Because J.J. McCarthy still has to, right now, is what matters. 
I'm not worried about Saturday. Hawaii sucks. That might be the worst team in the FBS. I, I, mean, I, I don't know what a line on Hawaii, Florida International would be. I just know it would be fugly. Okay, so that's maybe the worst team in all of FBS. Vanderbilt, that's the most points they've scored on an FBS opponent since the 40s. Western Kentucky, who barely beat an FCS team last week, put up a 50-some-odd burger. Hawaii is dreadful. I'm not worried about what J.J. is going to do Saturday night. With the, and neither are the coaches. What they're watching is what's going on today, tomorrow, this week. Can he lead a team? Can he prepare like a starting quarterback? It is one thing to come in and just utilize your incredible and impressive God-given ability for which he has multitudes. But now, are you an athlete or a prospect playing quarterback, or are you a quarterback prospect? And that's what this week is about. Can J.J. lead the team? Can he handle his business? Is he ready to step in? If he is, then this thing's over because he's got every other advantage on Cade McNamara. But we don't know that. And that's what's being watched this week. And that's why I'm going to say, at least for now, even though it's clearly trending this way, it's still a bit of an overreaction. Number two, however, at the very least, J.J. should at least be the red zone quarterback. I think that's a reaction. I agree with this. I mean, when you look at the tight windows in the red zone, when you look at the numbers in the run game that he provides, especially if we're not going to have a Hassan Haskins carrying you know, uh, three guys for three yards every time he touches the ball like he did the last couple of years, this absolutely matters. People forget one of the reasons why Jake Moody won the Groza Award last year. It's not just that he's a hell of a kicker. He got a lot of shots because Michigan's red zone offense converting into touchdowns until late in the year was not that great. And a lot of that is because can Cade throw into tight windows? Not really. Is Cade a running threat? Not really at all. So at the very least, this is something that JJ uh, should probably be doing anyway. But if things trend the way they are looking, he'll be the starting quarterback by the time we talk to you again next week. Number three. The defense will be even better than last season. I'm going to say actually reaction. And it's it's not so much because of how great they looked against Colorado State. 59 new players, a quarterback that had only thrown two balls ever, new coaching staff. It's the depth and the speed and that I think there's a bit of, a, of an urban legend about last year's defense. Last year's defense was very good, but two players had 25 sacks. The rest of the team had eight. Last year's defense was in transition from the abomination of Don Brown's last year. And so Mike McDonald, uh, because he's brilliant, crafted a defensive scheme initially to be built around Daxton Hill and Aiden Hutchinson. And then David Ojabo just kept getting so much single coverage because of Aiden that it became those three guys. But it was really those three guys were the constants. And they kind of, you know, schemed, schemed it up for the other eight guys on the defensive side of the ball in the middle of this transition year. This year... There aren't those other eight guys this time. This year, this looks like now a Michigan defense where there is depth and speed and athleticism everywhere you look. I don't think there there will necessarily be uh, even an Ojabo or Dax Hill level star. I'm not even compare somebody to Aiden. You're talking about arguably the greatest defensive player not named Charles Woodson in Michigan football history. So I'm not even going to go there. But I don't even know you'll ha- I don't even know you'll have an Ojabo or a Dax Hill. But remember when I predicted they'd have more sacks this year than last? If we might have six or seven guys that get four to six sacks, you can already see that happening. You're talking about this game they just played last last week would have been one of the best defensive efforts of last year statistically. So I do think the defense will be better than it was last year. It may not be as star-studded, but I think it will be better. Recall, Michigan was only 32nd in the nation in sacks last year. They're good at, that's, the, that's tied for the lowest mark in the Harbaugh era. They're going to be higher than that, much higher than that this year. Number three, or I'm sorry, number four. We missed Hassan Haskins' power running, especially in the red zone. For now, I'm going to say this is a reaction. Why am I going to say for now it's a reaction? Because I think if JJ's your quarterback, this gets alleviated. Because if you're not, if you're going to run 10 on 11, which is what you're doing with Cade McNamara in the game, they've got 11 guys, you've got 10, you're one man down. If JJ's, in, if you're going to do that, then the ability for a guy to get so many yards after contact, and the last few years in college football, the only player that got more yards after contact than Hassan Haskins was Najee Harris. He's a first round pick at running back, so that, that's those are pretty good. Uh, that's a, that's a pretty good peer group. The one, the other way around that is to do what most college teams do nowadays, and that's the quarterbacks are running threat, and so now you've got even up. 
Now they can't crash the edges. They have to account for the quarterback in the run game, which gives you better odds when you're blocking tackle to tackle. And I think that's going to ultimately be Michigan's solution. So I think a few weeks from now, this will be an overreaction, but for now, it is a reaction. And then finally, hey, none of this matters. Throw it all out. Shouldn't even play the game. No point in even watching it. They were just playing Colorado State. That's an overreaction. Hey, man, I, I wouldn't go printing tickets to the playoff because you beat Colorado State 51-7. to Okay, let's not do that. As the great prophet Harvey Keitel once said in the movie Pulp Fiction, let's not start um, pleasuring each other quite yet. Okay, it's, it, it, it's, it is Colorado State. There should be some recognition of that, maybe some significant recognition of that. But it, it's also disingenuous to say, oh, Michigan will suck on defense without Aiden Hutchinson. They go out there and get seven tackles and 11 tackles for loss uh, and, and seven tackles from six different players and 11 tackles for loss from nine different guys. And then you're like, Oh, it's just Colorado State. I mean, you could do that, but then you'd be a hack in a comment section. All right. If you want to have a real conversation, you cannot do both of those things. Right. And so it, it's clearly not an overreaction when you look at the reaction we're having to Cade McNamara's meh, performance in the game. So, yes, I wouldn't necessarily change your season. Um, you know, expectations for this team. I mean, mine were already pretty high anyway, but I wouldn't go ahead and change your season expectations because you slobber knocked Colorado State, you molly whopped them in week one. But when you look at some of the things you were concerned or not concerned about going into a season and you see how they perform, it's not overreaction at all because this is the first time you're seeing live action and it's the first time that they are in live action as well. Well, let's find out what someone who may not be as automatically favorable to the Wolverines as May happens to think. Mark Rogers will join us. We'll get uh, the view from the Scarlet and Gray side of things here in a moment. Yes, folks, uh, we get asked a lot, hey, what can we do to support what you're doing here at Michigan Podcast? We can always like, rate, subscribe, share the content, but you can also uh, share uh, with us by supporting us on our Patreon page. There you can see we've had an outstanding season so far uh, with Major League Baseball picks uh, all year long. We've got win totals posted uh, for college football for every college football team. Uh, already posted, uh, what, two months ago now, my season win total best bets for the season as well with the season nigh you'll be getting weekly picks and more for both college and pro football we'll finish baseball strong you don't want to miss it college basketball is only about 100 days away just five bucks a month if you want to support us to get all this great exclusive content on our patreon page at patreon.com slash michigan podcast that's Patreon dot com slash Michigan podcast. And as all as always, we want to thank the hundreds of you that are already supporting us there at patreon.com slash Michigan podcast. Well, as promised, let's get the view from the other side of the scarlet and gray side of the fence from our good friend, Mark Rogers. And again, if you're not watching, you're missing out. He's got a fantastic college football channel year round right here on YouTube, the voice of college football. He's got correspondents and stringers on virtually every major college program around the country, but in his heart of hearts, he bleeds scarlet and gray. So Mark, it's good to have you back. And before we get your thoughts on the Michigan game, I, I thought we'd be remiss if we didn't get your thoughts on your Ohio State Buckeyes. It was the showcase game of week one. Uh, Ohio State won by double digits in a game against a Notre Dame team that I think was rated too highly at number five, but also is not necessarily you know worthy, in my view, of being a 17-point underdog, as we talked about last week. And, and I thought from a tenaciousness standpoint that Notre Dame played like a proud program that had been told for eight months, you suck and don't deserve to be on the same field. And then at times, Ohio State played like they read the same press clippings. But I give I do give the Buckeyes a lot of credit in that Ryan Day swallowed his pride. At halftime, I could not believe Travion Henderson had five carries at halftime. I'm like, you know, I, it just made no sense to me. And he decided to go ahead and beat Notre Dame at its own game. Now, I would have ran Travion Henderson more. But you ran the power back more against Notre Dame's soft fronts where they're playing so much you got them zone defense, keep everybody in front of us. And it's not the way that Ryan Day has shown he's willing to win games at Ohio State, but he showed that he was willing to win a big game this way. And if you're a Buckeye fan, maybe you wanted more of a video game outcome, but it is an outcome that may pay dividends for you as the year goes on. What are your thoughts? 
Well, I think it's in some ways a more impressive outcome and a more impressive performance uh, for Ohio State this way. And even if it's not more impressive than the typical video game numbers, it's more meaningful. I'll say it that way. Maybe Brian Day learned something at the big house last November watching Hassan Haskins and that offensive line just lean on his defense because, like you say, they were basically challenged without their best wide receiver with Notre Dame's uh, defensive scheme and concept, the two high safeties, and uh, a near umbrella type coverage to say we need to be really patient in the passing game. Our 220 yards passing is going to be sufficient because uh, our defense is playing well and really, really stepped up in the second half is, is when the defense took over. It showed some some um, some leaks in the first half, but really tightened up in the second half. I find this a more meaningful result for Ohio State in the way it was able to win the game rather than Purdue, Michigan State last year when they put up 28 like before you could blink. And therefore, the defensive performance is kind of null and void. You don't even know what to take from that because they're playing uh, out in front by so much early that you can't really take anything from the defensive performance. The defense needed to win this game more than support the offense. The defense needed to win this game. And I actually liked the concept of, you know, again, in a comparative way, likening it to, to Hassan Haskins. And I didn't expect that to come out of my mouth, but it just automatically did. When you posed the question, Mayan Williams being more power back, but, and he's got the nickname bowling ball, but he's, he's more than just that. And, and I think it's going to be interesting for Ohio state, not just the run pass ratio and how the passing games utilized going forward, because defenses and other teams have their blueprint laid out for them but also how they utilize these two running backs that's going to be more maybe in the 55-45 range than I anticipated uh, and, and most anticipated because Trayvon, Travion Henderson is the star, uh, but it might be a lot more Mayan Williams in these type of games, i.e. Penn State's coming and, of course, Michigan. One more question on the Buckeye front, and it's got a, it's kind of a two-parter, I guess. Any update on Jackson, Smith, and Jigba? And, and what uh, the long-term severity of his injury was. And were you a little concerned that without him in the game, there's this notion that, and I mean, I bought into it too, Ohio State was going to lose two top 15 picks at wide receiver and not skip a beat because of what happened in the, in the Rose Bowl. Well, that was also a game where there was no film on a lot of these guys, right? I mean, Jackson Smith and Jigma was Ohio State's leading receiver last year, but no one had watched any of Marvin Harrison Jr.'s route runnings or any a lot of those other guys had really barely been seen. And it looked like without Njigma in the game, it really looked like it was a much more pedestrian passing attack. Do you think that's just more of a byproduct of the, you know, the the deep kind of don't give up anything over our head zone that Notre Dame was playing? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it is, but I think there are legitimate concerns. So I think C.J. Stroud looks at Jackson Smith and Jigba as a safety blanket. He looks for him first and foremost. And once he was taken out of the game, and they actually got him back into the game and used him very much as a decoy. There's one play in particular where he was used to clear out the secondary. He and two other receivers bring a Mecca Egbuka underneath and there was a miscommunication between Stroud and Ibuka uh, that was that was costly. Uh, it, it, it looked on the surface like Stroud made a bad pass. He didn't make a bad pass. Ibuka didn't sit in the zone because he was wide open. The play worked perfectly. There was miscommunication that really I don't understand because while we're talking about guys that have not piled up those kind of numbers, they've been in the program now for two to three years talking about Julian Fleming, Marvin Harrison, as you mentioned, Abuka and others. So their chemistry with Stroud should be better, I would think, with all the reps that they go through. But there was a a definite concern. Yes, it was Notre Dame's defensive scheme, but also concern that Stroud's a little too locked in on JSN and he's going to have some issues with guys that are super, super talented, but maybe still need to learn the nuances, plus also make difficult catches in traffic uh, that they haven't made on a regular basis. What about his injury? What are you hearing on that front? Uh, you know, when I got my Ohio State guys in here on Wednesday, we do a 1.30 p.m. show. I bet they're going to know a lot more, okay. although okay. you know how college football coaches are guarded. Uh, so I, I don't know much about it right now. I don't know, man. 
you know, I mean, I used to cover the most guarded one of them all. And now suddenly we're, you know, holding open position tryouts. He's giving his scouting report on players in public. He's running down depth charts. And I mean, this is, you know, it's it's not a Jim Harbaugh that we are accustomed to seeing. So let's switch gears and go ahead and talk about the Wolverines. I laid out five takes from the season opener against Colorado State. And we asked the question, which I answered for myself, are these reactions or overreactions? I'm going to go through the same five with you and get your take. All right. So number one. J.J. McCarthy should be the starting quarterback. Reaction or overreaction? We, we, we have uh, uh, overanalyzed this forever. I'm, I may be gotten to the point where I just want uh, this to blow up in Harbaugh's face and this to become a Cardell Jones, safety <laughs> Barrett debacle and hope that... Uh, what a debacle they, that was. Uh, Ohio State went 12-1, and one, finished in the top five, <laughs> and only lost a game because Urban Meyer forgot to give the damn ball to Ezekiel Elliott in a driving rainstorm for two hours. I hope we have that debacle. In fact, I'm freaking praying for it. I'll take that debacle right now. You guys beat the shit out of us in that season, too, as I recall. So, yes, I, I will take your debacle and see you and raise you and accept it. Yes, bring me your debacles, please. Yes. There was a lot of ugly, like, 20 to 13 wins over Northern Illinois in that season. It was it was a debacle on its own level. Yes, when they got focused at the end of the season, they were still uh, a wrecking uh, to, to be dealt with. But, uh, yeah, if we take this performance just on its own – Cade McNamara did not look like a great quarterback, uh, but we know who he is. I'm not going to overreact to missing some throws. He had a lot of throws in this game in which I couldn't quite determine, did he miss that throw or we, was he kind of like half throwing it out of bounds and half determining, well, if I give my guy like this one percent chance of, like I, I couldn't quite weigh whether he was being ultra conservative or he was just trying to give his guy some level of chance to catch the ball because there were a lot of those throwaways for him. He made one really bad look uh, in the red zone that should have been picked off. It was initially called an interception. You missed the guy by a mile. Uh, but I'm not too concerned with Cade McNamara. I I just can't imagine that these games are really going to tell Jim Harbaugh much about these quarterbacks that he doesn't already know. Uh, J.J. McCarthy uh, has a uh, more talent, higher ceiling, all those sorts of things. Can he run the offense? We get a look at it uh, this week. I'm going to be interested to see whether they give McNamara the reps that they gave McCarthy. He's not the changeup guy. We've talked about this many times that if he loses the job, he's not, mm -hmm. he's simply a backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's not the guy J.J. is to come in and give the defense a different look and a different skill set. So are they going to give Cade the reps that they gave J.J. going four for four this week that they gave J.J. in week one? All right. Number two, J.J. McCarthy should at least be the red zone quarterback. And if you go back to last year, one of the reasons why we had the Lou Groza award winning kicker, I mean, he's a hell of a kicker. OK, but he got a lot of opportunities, uh, sub 40 yard, 45 yards, because not until the end of the year were we actually a great red zone offense at converting touchdown or red zone opportunities into touchdowns. That's a misnomer about last year's team. Michigan actually had more 40 and 50 plus yard touchdown pass, touchdown plays than any team in college football last year. They, they were not great until the end of the season in converting red zone opportunities into touchdowns and had to kick a lot of field goals in places like Nebraska. And, and some of those games, right? And you saw this again, again against Colorado State. That is not Cade's game. He doesn't have the arm for throwing into tight windows. He's not a running threat, so you've got numbers in the box. So at the very least, reaction or overreaction, J.J. should be the red zone quarterback. There's uh, maybe Harbaugh is going to fall right into the pit that I'm hoping that they fall into. I, I don't like that whole we, we've got a quarterback who's going to remove it from the 25 yard line all the way into the red zone and we're going to remove him from the game. Uh, you know, might as well go to the Steve Spurrier approach of, you know, shuttling in quarterbacks or Tom Landry did that with Staubach and Morton at one point way, yeah. way back. Steve Spurrier There's beat Florida State when they were like number two in the country one year doing that and. Uh, finishing the top 10. You keep giving me these examples of, ri of of ridiculous things that worked, brother. These things worked. Well, Tom Landry figured out halfway through the season it didn't work, and then he settled on Staubach, and they won the Super Bowl. But, yes, they worked because they, they, they had great talent, and Michigan's certainly in that category to a certain extent. 
I just don't, I, in a tactical way, I can't give a tactical argument as to why J.J. would not be the better threat in the red zone. But isn't he the better threat at the 50, at the 40, at the yes. everywhere on the See, field? That's, that's the thing about this that people don't understand is even if Harbaugh had never, let's pretend, let's do an exercise, Mark. Let's pretend Harbaugh had never opened his mouth about this being an open competition and just announced Kate is the starter and JJ will play just like we saw last year. And let's just pretend that's all, and which is what we anticipated would happen. And let's pretend that happened and we saw the exact game. Now, some people are going to say, well, Harbaugh messed with Jay, with, with, with Cade mentally by yanking his chain here at the end, except nine out of 18 for 160 yards. If you watch last year, that's a pretty Cade McNamara passing line. Uh, actually, all right, one touchdown, no picks. That's, Except for against Michigan State's pretty awful secondary. That's pretty much what he did against everybody else. Okay? So let's pretend that Harbaugh never opened the door. When we had the exact same game we just saw. Mark, what's the number one thing we're talking about out of that game? We're talking about Kate McNamara, not... uh, Yeah, same thing. We're having the same conversation. We're having the exact same conversation. It's obvious it's a different offense when J.J.'s in the game. He At at the very least, tell him to just dump dump the ball off like Kay does, but then now you've got a running threat on top of it, so it's not just a bluff zone read every time where the opponent's got numbers in the box. We would be having the same conversation whether Jim opened up the the competition or not because it's obvious to everybody that one guy is a superior prospect to the other that's why they're doing this it's obvious to them too they're lengthening the runway so that there's more room for jj mccarthy to land the plane this is pretty obvious what is going on here okay and then and i think they intended him to be the starting quarterback coming out of the orange bowl he had to rest his shoulder all of spring so now he's not there really full-time the entire spring this is being done so that the guy that won't go nine of 18 for a buck 60 can be the quarterback. That's pretty obvious. Well, then we've got our answer, and that's the right answer. It's uh, there. They have a player in J.J. McCarthy who's not just a better player in terms of arm strength and speed and ability uh, athletically, but he's played in enough games and shown it. And no, he's not had the shoulder, the burden of the offense from play one to pay, play conclusion mm-hmm. of the game. But other than that, uh, he has played – uh, big opponents in meaningful spots in close games. So time to cut loose and, and let it go. And um, uh, the the only thing that's going to make this an issue is if somehow J.J. McCarthy comes out this week and goes 9 for 21 and throws two picks. <laughs> yes. All right, let's do these final three in more rapid-fire fashion. The defense will be even better than last season. Reaction or overreaction? Harbaugh was hinting at that during camp. All right, so is that reaction or overreaction? What do you think? Uh, the defense at this point is not better than last year. They played Colorado State. They had a tremendous defensive effort. Every play that I saw, they were all over the quarterback. Uh, so I get that. There there should be optimism. It's still a great group. And it might collectively be a better defense. We shall see. Mm-hmm. But I'm still missing those three to four stars. Okay, number four. We missed Hassan Haskins power running, especially in the red zone. Reaction uh, or overreaction? Then this is something that you would substitute with JJ in the lineup. Is it becomes you kind of alleviate that thing if you do think that's a problem. Him in the lineup kind of alleviates it because now you've got numbers in the box. But what is your take? Well, this is kind of the football that's not real sexy that people don't talk about that fans don't focus on, but could be key against better teams, better defenses there. And Hassan Haskins. Has been missed, will be missed, doesn't seem to be completely replaced by either one of those two players. But it is a uh, it's a it's a small portion of the offense in the red zone running game one yard, two yards. But it could be crucial at some point in the season, by the way, from 2018 to 2021. The two running backs in college football, that gained the most yards after contact. Najee Harris is number one. Hassan Haskins is number two. So there you go. Finally. None of this matters at all because it was only Colorado State. Reaction or overreaction? 
that is generally a reaction. However, even Colorado State uh, has pockets of players that will move on to the NFL. Well, they've got one or two guys on the roster move on to the NFL or one or two per class that will play in the NFL at some point. And they got a collection of players that in pockets you can identify as, okay, these are matchups that we're not hitting on because Colorado State is capable players that can match Michigan. But there's only a handful of them. So it's generally reaction, makes sense. Uh, we need to see Michigan play a team that's in the top 50 in the nation. Good stuff, my friend. We'll talk to you again soon. All right, take care. Thanks, Steve. You bet. Appreciate it. This week's Twitter poll results. What is your biggest week one overreaction to Michigan's 51 to 7 win over Colorado State? A majority of you, 52.4% of you saying JJ should be the starting quarterback. I think you're likely about to get your wish. 25% of you saying the defense will be even better. 22.7% of you saying, uh, I think we are going to miss this on Haskins power running, uh, at least in the red zone. So that's what you guys think. And that brings us to our feedback of the week. At Gringo Domi, because I won't even attempt to pronounce his actual screen name. Bro, you have been crazy spot on. Glad I follow your channel here on YouTube. Keep it 100. Thank you. Why is he bringing this up? Because he remembered when I predicted on here many moons ago that Michigan would end up with more sacks in 2022 than it had with Aiden Hutchinson in 2021. Well, Michigan had 33 sacks last year. It had seven last week, so it had more than one fifth of its in total, if its entire season total, in just last week's game alone. So, yeah, that prediction is going to turn out to be accurate. So, thank you for giving us props. I always appreciate that because you know me, I, I suffer from low self esteem. That'll do it for this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. Don't forget to like, rate, subscribe, share. Uh, whichever uh, applies to however you watch, like right here on YouTube or listen, like on iTunes or Stitcher. Help us to find more Michigan fans just like you and keep those five-star reviews coming as well. You can also follow us on Twitter in between episodes at Michigan Podcast. Until the next time, I'm Steve Dace. Go Blue.